Okay, please join with me now in our call to worship. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in Jesus. Christ has gone to prepare a place for us. Christ will lead us to be with him. We know the way to the place where Jesus is. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Come, let us join together on the journey of faith. Come, let us follow Jesus, who is the way. Our first hymn will be He Leads Me. And now our call to confession, the psalmist speaks of God as a rock of refuge and a strong fortress to save us. God is the one who lifts us up out of dark places and who redeems us with steadfast love. Trusting this, let us turn to God and confess our sins, first together using the prayer on our screens and then silently. Let us pray. God of grace, we confess that we sometimes forget your goodness and settle for a lesser life. We fail to become a strong spiritual home for you, forgetting that we are the living stones with which you want to build a reign of love and justice. We act as if our existence has no meaning, forgetting that you have called us as your very own and given us a holy purpose. Empower us by your spirit to live grace-filled lives in gratitude for the gifts we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name, amen.
Friends, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We can always know forgiveness, healing, and restoration because Jesus laid down his life for us. May we know the truth of God's love and love one another, standing confident in the forgiveness that Jesus offers us. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us sing our praise using Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks. Now a prayer for illumination. Guiding God, send your Holy Spirit upon the reading of your word, that it may serve to show us the path of life and lead us into your presence, where there is fullness of joy. Amen. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. I'll now read the screen in front of you. Please listen now to the word. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in the scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone. A cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders are checking has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes up a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Here ends that reading. And from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Jesus tells his disciples and he says to us these words. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to me or no one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do not know him and have seen him. You who do not know him have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. 
Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I prepare for my sermons each week, I have a few websites that I go to pretty regularly and frequently. One is um, written by Carolyn Brown. It's called Worshiping with Children. As her expertise is in Christian education, she helps uh, worship leaders think how the scripture passages that week will connect with children and how they will understand it. In this readings this week, she told us, as you noticed probably as you heard them, that there are a plethora of images and abstract ideas. And she suggests to pick just one so as not to overwhelm. And I thought this was a sound advice for people of all ages, not just the young, especially in this season when everyone's stress levels are so high and it's hard to concentrate on anything, let alone one thing, and to focus too much. But I encourage you um, that there is such depth in these scripture passages and such beautiful imagery and such um, comfort and strength and hope in them that um, I encourage you to keep them with you this week, um, to uh, read them each day, either one or the other, other and just kind of let the words and the imageries of the scripture kind of live with us and live in your hearts and your imaginations as we walk and dwell in this week. So I invite you to kind of take on that um, experiment this week and just maybe read one um, or both of them each day knowing that God may want you to hear something in these passages that I'm not going to mention to you today or that God might want you to explore more deeply an idea or an image that um, will be just briefly touched on um, because I, I don't have all day to, to share and delve into these scripture passages um, but um, so I, I share with that share with you the that habit and that practice because reading scripture is an important practice for us to grow in our faith and to grow in our relationship with God. Um, but also to share with you and to confess with you that this week as I was doing that myself, I kept getting caught on the very first verse. I hardly ever got past that first verse in John's gospel. Um, well, actually the first part of the first verse of John's gospel as I read through, my mind kept and heart kept coming back to Jesus' words, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Yeah, Jesus, don't you know what's going on, <laughs> right? Troubled heart is a great way to describe what I'm feeling. Troubled over the uncertainty, troubled over the unknowns ahead, troubled over the con contradictory information coming from experts from the left and the right and here and there. Troubled over knowing how best to share from my abundance and my gifts to those most in need. Troubled with not physically being around people. Or for some of you, it might be troubled for being around people too much. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Yeah, Jesus, sorry, not this week. Right? But when we read past these first seven words to the rest of verse 1, Jesus gives us a cure, an antidote for our troubled hearts. He says, believe in God, believe also in me. Some translations use trust in place of believe. Trust in God, trust also in me. Trust is an essential part of any relationship. Trust is much more intimate than believe. We can believe in God but do we trust God with our troubled hearts? 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Jesus doesn't give us these words lightly. He knows all about troubled hearts. He speaks these words to his disciples the night he is betrayed and arrested. He speaks these words knowing that his crucifixion is soon, within a day. He speaks knowing that Peter is going to deny him three times, not just once, but three times within a period of, of a day. He speaks these words telling his disciples that he will soon die and that they will be scattered and abandon him. Jesus knows all about troubled hearts. His words are not spoken lightly and his words come from a place of experience. When Jesus tells us to trust in God, he is telling us to do what he has already done. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. As I read further into John's gospel, I take comfort that Thomas and Philip hear these words, but don't really understand them right away. They follow up with questions. I take comfort that Jesus keeps talking to them anyways, even in their uncertainty, even when they don't understand. I take comfort that their lack of understanding, their lack of trust, their lack of belief doesn't disqualify them from having a seat with Jesus at the table. I take comfort that Jesus basically tells us and tells them, I know you don't fully understand what I'm telling you. I know you don't fully understand the relationship I'm offering you. I know you don't fully understand what lies ahead, but I will keep telling you until you start to understand more fully. I will keep telling you and sharing with you these words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. Friends, this trust that we have in God is not just for this one moment, but is trust that has been tested and built over our lifetimes but also the lifetime of followers of God for generations and generations. This is a tested truth. These aren't just words for a time like this. These are, these are words for every season, every trouble, every time our hearts are uncertain, every time our hearts are anxious, Jesus says, trust in me. Trust not always in what you can see or what you can feel, but trust in me. Trust in me who is the way, the truth, and the life. Trust in me who is going ahead of you and leading you into all the uncertainties, leading you and guiding you every day days when we are troubled, days when we are excited, days when we are hopeful, every day between. Friends, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in Christ. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, as we experience another day, another week, let us not, let not our hearts be troubled. Help us to trust that you are with us, that you will neither leave us nor forsake us. Help us trust that you are the way and that through you there is life. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Amy. At this point in time, uh, we will go ahead and uh, hear any joys or concerns. Are there any joys or concerns that folks would like to share? Jason.
Can you hear me? Jason? Yes. Go ahead, Christine. Okay. Um, our cousin, Mark Kimball, uh, has um, a cancerous mass on his kidney and has to have his kidney removed this week. So prayers for Mark. Okay. God of, God of mercy, hear our prayer. Are there any others this morning? Yeah, Jason. Yeah, I want to thank, thank everybody for their cards and thoughts uh, on my repair. So thanks again. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, Jason? Yes. I would like to continue prayers for my cousin, John Davis. Prayers for John Davis. God of mercy, hear our prayer. I would like prayers for mothers on this special day and every day. They're very special people. Indeed. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Amy Mills, did you have something you wanted to say? I did. Um, just prayers for Molly. She actually broke her arm on Wednesday, and it was her right arm. And she's having a hard time accepting it because she can't go to the barn, and she can't draw, and she can't write. So just prayers to comfort Molly. Uh, you know what that's like. And that, it was hard when I, I broke my arm. Once. That was hard. So God mercy her prayer. Are there any other uh, joys or concerns? Also, can we keep oh, Kyle? Did Kyle have one? Yes. He's muted. He's muted. I can't hear him. Kyle. It's under Kyle. I think so. Well, while Kyle's trying to unmute himself. Oh, you got him? There okay, we go. Kyle, share, share go ahead, story. Kyle. Well, I pray for my brother, Brian. He just showed his house. He's moving in on a new house. We have to pray for him. Um, keep him healthy and God for him. Thank you. Okay. God of mercy, hear our mercy. prayer. I and mean, then please keep Tommy and Lisa, Emma in your prayers. Um, Tommy's health kind of took a turn um, a few weeks ago and, and just, um, just please keep them in your prayers. Amy, Let us pray. yes. Amy, please prayers for Charlie for surgery this Friday. Oh. Oh, prayers for Charlie as he goes for surgery. God of mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, we come to you in prayer today, longing to see and sense your presence in these uncertain times. Pray for your world, our community, our loved ones, and ourselves as we seek to understand and find our way during this season of COVID. Lord, bring comfort to all those who grieve, those who grieve a loved one, but also those who grieve the loss of um, expected seasons and, and milestones. So, Lord, we pray, we pray for those that grieve the inability to have a graduation this year or a prom or a planned trip or a wedding. Lord, we know that, that these are griefs, even while we rejoice in good health and, and other things that are going well, we also grieve these losses. So Lord, bring us comfort in these times when we are anxious and uncertain. Lord, we ask that you bring hope to all who are struggling economically, socially, mentally, physically, in all manners because of this pandemic. Lord, we pray for all those that are learning new ways to be, learning new skills. Help us 
to be creative and to have the energy to try something new. And Lord, when, when we don't and we just want to fall down in a puddle and just say and be, sit with us. Give us your peace and your comfort. Bring your comfort to our troubled hearts. Lord, we pray for our leaders in government and health officials. Guide them as they make the difficult decisions in the days and weeks to come about when and how to help us safely resume some normal activities. Lord, we here in our own lives are so consumed by COVID that sometimes it's hard to see other parts of the world. But Lord, we come and pray for the farmers and the people of Africa as they are experiencing a second large surge of locusts, as the insects rise to plague levels, causing destruction. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Kenya, Yemen, Somalia, Ethiopia, and other nearby countries. Lord, we pray all of these things as well as the ones that we've lifted up to you. We pray for your peace and your comfort and strength to be with Tommy and Lisa. We pray for your healing um, of Molly's broken arm, but also pray for, for her, for peace as she struggles to figure out how to navigate life with a broken right arm. Lord, we pray for Paulette's cousin, John Davis. We ask for healing and strength, him to feel your presence. We pray for those that are going into surgery this week. We pray for Mark and Charlie. We ask that you might give them your peace as they await the surgery. We pray for the skill of the doctors and the nurses tending and caring to them. And Lord, we actually we give ask for extra blessings and extra peace on their loved ones as they kind of navigate how to wait for somebody and to hear how things are going um, in this time of separation in hospitals. Lord, we give you thanks for Bob's successful repair, as he called it, and we thank you for all the support um, that he felt from, from you and from us. Lord, we pray for Brian as he starts moving back home. Might you give him peace and um, speedy process as he moves from a different state back home. Give him your peace in this time of transition. Lord, on this special day of, that we honor mothers, we give you thanks for all the mothers in our lives, for they are truly special people. Lord, we give you thanks for those that have mothered us, whether they are biological or not, those that have taught us and guided us and helped us to be the people that we are today. Lord, we pray for your church. We pray for this community of believers that are is gathered here. Help us to continue to follow you, to continue to learn how to be your people. Help us to continue to be your people and to say that we are your people whether we are gathered in a physical place or whether we are gathered through technology. For it is your love that unites us. It is your, our common calling and our common ministry in you that gives us purpose and connection. So Lord, we pray all of this in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior who taught us to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As Lois said, mothers are very special people. And so I um, invited you this week to, to send me pictures of your mothers. Um, and so we, I put them together in a little bit of a PowerPoint slideshow. And so um, I invite you to, um, to um, come and to see all the mothers as we pray for our mothers um, using a litany and a prayer here. So God, on this day, we celebrate and honor our mothers, grandmothers, stepmothers, and others who have been like mothers to us. We give thanks for the care, love, and faith given to us by the mothers in our lives. We mourn with those who are missing their mothers and loved ones. We grieve with those for whom this day is difficult, for those who have lost a child or are unable to have children. Gracious and loving God, we pray for new mothers coming to terms with new responsibility, for expectant mothers wondering and waiting, for those who are tired, stressed, or depressed, or all three, for those who struggle to balance the tasks of work and family, for those who are unable to feed their children, for those whose children have physical, mental, or emotional challenges. For those who have children they do not want. For those who raise children on their own. For those who have lost a child. For those who care for the children of others. For those whose children have left home. And for those whose desire to be a mother has not been fulfilled. Lord, bless all mothers, that their love may be deep and tender, and that they may lead their children to know and do what is good, living not for themselves alone, but for God and for others. Amen. So friends, when we join in music or mission or ministry or fellowship, we discover that God makes us better for being built upon one another like living stones into the house of the Lord. So let us join together and offer ourselves and the fruit of our labor for God's work in the world. For we have this common faith and common calling in ministry together. So I am invite you to um, 
I'm going to share some announcements, but if there are some more announcements and ways that we can do ministry together and to share in that ministry in this time, please feel free to share, share that. We are continuing um, our Wednesday gatherings. So we can meet at 10 a.m., 7.30 p.m., and also 4 o'clock with the kids. Um, also, thank you so much for those that have turned in your pictures of hope. They've been great. I've been using them a little bit. Um, and thank you for those that have turned in their pictures of your moms. Um, I will, um, I'm going to try and kind of just cut that part out of the service and put that up on Facebook so we can have, um, you can kind of look at those at more of your leisure and kind of um, a little slower pace when you would like to see all those pictures. Um, also, the Deacons Fund this month is goes to Daisy. Uh, Daisy is the um, domestic and sexual violence um, uh, advocacy and service provider in our county. So that is where our Deacons Fund goes. So thank you for those that have, have contributed to that. Um, and just um, please, we put these out there as the Deacons um, just to let people know the resources in our county. Um, and also, too, if this is a ministry of your heart, to uh, have an opportunity to share through this way. Um, I thank you for um, your pledges and your donations that you have been mailing in and keeping up with. Thank you so much um, this season of not gathering together, um, but we still have bills to pay. So, Lord, thank you for keeping up with those. Um, our online giving was put up last week, and several of you have already tried that out, and your donations have come through, so thank you for that. Um, if you want more information, our email that Sharon sends out with our church news on Friday, she sent out um, some information on that and question and answer, so please look in your email if you have questions, more specific questions about that, or always feel free to give me a call, um, and I can... If I don't know the answer, I can help find it out for you. So are there any other um, announcements or opportunities for us to serve in this time together that we'd like to share? Then, Lord, I ask your blessing on the gifts that we offer to you and on these people gathered here. Please be with us and give us courage. Use these gifts to help that we offer to you and to others. Use these gifts to help as you have helped us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I invite us to sing um, our final hymn today, which is, Open My Eyes That I May See. Thank mm -hmm. you.
invite you to help me in the benediction this morning, to share in this blessing and a charge as we go out into the week. For may the blessing of the one who is the way be with you in the days to come. May God guide our feet wherever we go. May the blessings of Jesus, who is our life, be with you in the days to come. May he lead us by the hand to those who are sisters and brothers in need. May the blessings of the spirit of truth be with you in the days to come. May we journey with the spirit to that way which is everlasting.